Hello, thank you guys so much for clicking this podcast today. I really appreciate it. It's going to be very exciting. This is the Cardano Aura podcast. I bring people on from the Cardano community. They're adding value to the Cardano blockchain through building out utility or projects on Cardano. And we have them on to not only learn more about their project, but to learn more about Cardano because the people building uh, are really where I derive the most information from and, you know, progress in my learning journey. And today's going to be very unique. We're actually going to be talking about a video game that is going to be using the Cardano blockchain. And that video game is called Cornucopia. And I know a lot of people aren't immediately interested in video games. You know, you may be older, you may work a lot, you may not have time for them. So you might be thinking to yourself, what is the value in a video game on Cardano? Well, that's what we're going to be answering today. And I personally believe that video games are going to have a huge impact on blockchain through users, through that adoption curve that we're going to see, because not so many people are excited about finances and learning about cryptocurrency. But what people do love doing is playing video games. And I think, uh, you know, people's love for video games and people building video games on the blockchain is going to acquire all of those users that love playing video games and introduce them uh, to the technology that we all love. So make sure you guys stay tuned for this whole podcast because we're going to learn a lot. So today I have the two founders of Cornucopia, Rob and Josh. How are you guys doing today? Good, man. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Yeah, so, it's great. Yeah, dude, it's great dude, to be on well. the show. We actually have two other founders. There's four founders total, but yeah, Rob and I are here today. So, yeah, And I'm happy to have you. So for someone who has never heard of Cornucopia, what is Cornucopia? Cornucopius is a blockchain based uh it's going to be based on the cardano blockchain obviously uh that's where we're minting our nfts so it's a it's a video game that has a metaverse element to it as well and it's got a variety of themed zones that people can explore we have a zone called the age of the samurai a zone called farm life uh there's going to be a city zone where that's going to be a little bit more bridge to the metaverse element and and bringing in a lot of different real world businesses into the city and giving people just a good amount of variety of what they can do within our game, uh, where people will have daily tasks. Um, they can own their own NFT-based assets. So that, that one of the beautiful things is, you know, in traditional gaming, if you stop playing the game, you don't take anything with you. You don't get to sell your assets. You don't, you know, whatever. But in this case, you get to own your assets and resell them and trade and, uh, and participate in the in-game economy, which is really exciting. That is very exciting. So in that city space, you know, is that going to be, um, you know, much larger than the, you know, personal playable spaces? And, you know, how, how is that going to look? I'm just curious. Yeah, definitely. We, we, we're getting the game is divided into into separate sections. So you start off in your, in your home bubble, um, then you'll be able to travel to, to the various zones. And then eventually, when, when we build the city, you'll move to the city and the city is going to be going to be huge. If I step back a little bit, you're going to have one personal bubble, the different themed zones, there's going to be 12 of them, and then the city itself is going to be one huge city with 12 different districts. So each district is going to be the size of one of the theme zones. So one of them is going to be a racing district, and that whole district is going to have a racing stadium in there. There's going to be um, player-owned hotels, um, houses. There's going to be commerce. That's that's real, real commercial companies that are going to come in and and have their um, their shops in there. Um, there's going to be all kinds of of, of uh, player-owned and, and commercially-owned enterprises that that live there within the city. That's awesome. And, you know, when speaking about, you know, players owning, you know, these hotels or these spaces are all are those going to be NFTs or are they going to be owned, you know, in game, whereas NFTs will be used as, you know, for, for other utility? Yeah, the NFTs will be will the, the player will own the actual hotel um, and within the villages, within the theme zones, they will then own um, village houses. And as they're playing and progressing through the game, they'll be able to upgrade, upgrade the hotel or upgrade their village houses. Um, so if a village house, for example, will start off just as the player owned house, they can then upgrade that to a B&B, &B, and then they can upgrade that up to, a, up to a little hotel. 
and as you're upgrading you will then be able to rent out those rooms to, to other players within the game that's very cool so the you know the initial bubbles and it makes sense that it's cornucopia us you know because people have their you know their own and there's there's multiple so sorry for get for forgetting that s there uh, but those you know player bubbles can you upgrade those over time as well yes and is, absolutely and what one does of, that upgrading the, look like one of the exciting things about the game in in this was an idea that rob and one of our developers came up with in terms of the bubbles is you know it gives us the ability to give everybody whoever starts automatically gets their own personal bubble which contains a hammock and two trees um and that's it and so one of the ways that they're incentivized to build out their bubble and, and upgrade and grow their own personal bubble is to get on to the mainlands. So they travel to the mainlands and go play the game. And so they have to accomplish a variety of tasks in order to earn the ability to add a house in their own personal bubble, for example. And so over time, through playing the game, or through, you know, they can spend as well to upgrade their bubble. They can do it either way. They will grow out their space and bling it out, basically. And you can do some pretty amazing stuff. So in, in this video release that we're going to show, uh, there's some, uh, we, we've got a new release coming out on Monday. And it's unbelievable what our develop our development team has programmed in in the ability to build out your own personal space it's remarkable i'm so proud of our team they've accomplished so much in a short amount of time and you'll be able to see that on monday in this uh, or actually today, later today in the in the video release you're going to see the ability to build out your own home within your bubble and the the uh scope of that and what that means for the game is pretty remarkable because over time as we uh, execute the full vision of what that building materials and using different materials and building and architecture and growing things. When we execute that full vision, we now have a community of trained people that have the ability to build whatever they want. And so now all of a sudden we have a self building metaverse, which is pretty remarkable. Yeah. And, and once you've, you, you start off with this, everybody starts off with the free bubble, like Josh said, two trees and a hammock. You build to it over time. That in itself can then be minted to an NFT and you can sell that on. So Correct. that would Thank mean that the game that is yes. free to play. Yes, the game is, is absolutely free to play. Yeah, That's very exciting. Yeah, we're looking for obviously mass adoption. We know we've we've studied games that are, that are coming on the blockchain over the last year and the majority of them there is an entry point and that entry point as that game gets more successful is even harder and harder to enter um, and that will just stop adoption we want the game to be free forever um, not all elements have to be player owned um, you don't have to own a village village house you you can come in you can go around the various villages and still do the task you can go to the city, you can go to the cinema, you can go and play the mini games that, that are in the game as well. All of it will be free to play. And because it is play to earn, you will still be earning um, as, you, as you go along. So well, one thing I, I would add to that is uh, the, well, just to emphasize Rob's point, we really want to bring in people into the crypto space, into the blockchain space that are not aware of how to utilize wallets and, and how that whole thing works. And so we're trying to make that process as seamless as possible so that we're bridging in people that aren't aware of crypto or wallets and, and they're just into playing the game. We want to make it as simple and seamless as possible for them to start. And so that is one thing about the personal bubble. It doesn't start off as an NFT, but when the time is right, they can very easily go and convert that to an NFT and then sell it. So we're, we're, uh, like one of the things with uh, Jira Wallet, for example, is they allow fiat onboarding. And so that's one way to get into our game because we have a partnership with them where you can utilize fiat onboarding to get into the game. If you did want to buy some of your assets, you could use USD or you know, GBP, whatever, to purchase in-game tokens and, and continue playing the game. Uh, but that's not required either. 
Yeah, and it makes sense from a cost perspective, too. If someone's getting into the game for free, you know, when they go to mint that NFT, you guys shouldn't have to, you know, cover that cost when they're playing the game for free. So I wanted to touch more on this idea of, you know, the, you know, essentially the metaverse that you're building being open and that other people have the ability to, you know, add value and build in the future. You know, how, how will that work? I, I know, like, for, with Cardano, for example, you know, everything must start centralized and move to decentralization. Is that your plan? Or are you just planning to, you know, while it remains centralized, allowing other people to add value through their building? Yeah, Very similar. yeah go ahead, Rob. Yeah, yeah I was going to say that there's, there's a, lot, a, lot of, a lot to unpack with that question there. So, so, so yeah, long term, we're starting centralized. We're, we're coding on the cloud, but we're building in a way so we, we can move over to de decentralized. We, we've got a, um, a partnership with QDOS that are very heavily into decentralized um, storage. Um, so we will be working with those that, that, that the QDOS to um, decentralize our, our platform long term. So uh, we're building it in, in different small chunks so the, the different departments can work on their on on the game individually, and we'll be able to to, to progress as as we're ready to progress. So, for example, we, you know, I talk about having a million players. Well, because everybody's on individual um, bubbles to begin with, from a performance point of view, the, the the game engine is just having to look at one bubble, and then we'll progress into multiplayer as as, as everybody comes together in zones. Um, in terms of bringing in other projects into the game, yes, we, as, as you will see in the demo, we have the ability to display any NFT on the walls within our houses. So in the demo, you'll see that what because we will connect to your wallet, we'll be able to read all those Cardano projects. That's not our projects. So Jet Chickens, for example, the MySerial Gallery, we can pull all these in and, and, and as, as long as it's in the connected wallet, you'll be able to display them in our game. But we're also not stopping on just the Cardano network. This is where we are minting and, and starting our footprint, in, uh, uh, our journey into, into, into the, the blockchain metaverse because our history is, is, is deep within Cardano. We're also in the future going cross-chain so we'll be able to pull in nfts from ethereum solano um, immutable x all these other chains again um, which i think from some people originally they didn't understand that um, as a strategy but in terms of adoption for the cardano network this is bringing cardano and players that would wouldn't be on cardano brings their wallets in, in into our ecosystem and makes it grow um, even more so I, I think it's i think it would be amazing for adoption for our game and for adoption for the cardano network yeah i agree Can completely it's uh it's pretty clever you know you have these nft communities on ethereum or even on cardano or other chains and you know by adding utility to something that is just profile picks and allowing people to show off their nfts you know uh will obviously in the long term bring in a lot of users that are just excited to see their nft uh in a new light you know in, yeah. a, in a new way so <clears throat> i i read that you guys have a copy token is that the token that you're going to use to, you know, upgrade these houses, or will that be a different in-game currency? And uh, can you tell us more about the Kopi token? Kopi token's primarily for governance, but you you can use it to purchase in-game assets and also in-game tokens. So there will be a separate token for the in-game part of things. But the Kopi token primarily is going to be utilized for governance. And in answer to your previous question as well about decentralization, Rob talked about some of the technical elements of it. But as we gradually decentralize, we're going to be giving the, more, the community more and more of a say over time in what happens with this game and with this metaverse. And so uh, that's an incredibly you know powerful reason. And that's also very, it's, it's one of the reasons that we are uh, choosing Cardano as well uh, as, a, as a home base is because of the governance features of Catalyst and what they're bringing to the table with that, with that functionality as that grows with Voltaire over time. So we want to have that ability uh, and that functionality within the system to allow people the ability to vote on what happens with our, uh, with our game. And so the token is somewhat of a means of whitelisting, you know, your voting access. Okay. And the community for, for me is so key 
um, so key to the project, so key to Cardano and, and, and so key to our to our project. And we've already tested some of that already. We have about 1,400 Discord members, which are now OG members, and we're giving away a free NFT to those OG members. That in return, they will help us to test our backend systems. Um, and the first question we've asked for them is, you know, your OG car that you're going to get, how do you want it? Do you want a single car? Do you want a choice of five cars? Do you want a lucky drop? So we've already put that to the test and that, that was completely public and they voted back and they wanted kind of a lucky drop and a, and a rarity. So we will just evolve over that process. It's working really, really well. Awesome. So, you know, I want to take a little bit of a step back because, um, you know, for people that are watching this, Cardano, you know, it's 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 new, but it's getting a lot of utility. And lately, the chain load, you know, has been oftentimes above 50%. It's been above 60%. And, you know, if it reaches 100, you're going to have to wait, you know, time for your transaction to go through relative to the total amount of people using the chain. And, you know, this is it's just like Ethereum. You know, there's a, a small amount of transactions per second. So what you have to do to solve that problem is you have to build, you know, a layer two protocol or a side chain. And, you know, an example of this uh, on Ethereum, you know, would be, you know, using ZK rollups to bring a lot of those transactions to layer two and then doing less transactions on the main chain. So now that we've got that little bit education bit out of the way, you know, what, what are your plans for, you know, chain load moving forward? Will you guys have, you know, a side chain or a layer two protocol of sort, or will you strictly, you know, only use the main chain, uh, the layer one Cardano for Cornucopius? Yeah, I, I think, you know, the, the amount of transactions that happen in any game, not, not just in our game, you, you have to have a, um, a layer two solution. You, you have players that are playing the game and you need, in, in a traditional game, those auto saves could happen once a minute or once every five minutes or once every 10 minutes. If we multiply that by, say, a million players, you know, in my wildest dream, we've got a million players now all saving their saves every one minute. You know, we do not want to kill the, the, the blockchain, yeah. um, um, nor are we going to be the only game that, that's present on the blockchain. So, yeah, you, you have to have um, a, a two chain with, with the side chain um, strategy. It's, it's the only way any game could, could practically happen. Yeah, that's. That's what I, um, you know, from my understanding, I, I assume that, but I was just curious on your guys' perspective. Because there is, you know, with in-game currency, and as you mentioned, saves with all of the actions that are happening in-game and, you know, the limitations on the data that can be saved to the Cardano blockchain, that it's just, you know, it's it's self-evident that you're going to need a layer two specifically for you know, that, your game. That's how the, the, the decentralized nodes work. So, so our nodes will, a game really is, is a database. It's, it's a huge database. And alongside that with a blockchain game, you have the, the NFTs. So the NFTs, they remain on, on, on the, the blockchain and this can be shared with the players and, and we just read the blockchain so we know where you, your, your profile is real time. But all the saves, they happen in this distributed database. So in the future, we're, go, we're going to give the players the ability to own their own nodes, just like the state pools within the Cardano network. The, the players will be owning these nodes and those nodes themselves will actually provide a small part of our distributed database. Awesome. I really appreciate that explanation. And to, to jump around a little bit more, um, I noticed that the Kopi token uh, was on Binance Smart Chain. I was curious about the initial choice of using the Binance Smart Chain for that. Um, and also if there's any plan to you know have that token as a Cardano native asset. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It will be a Cardano native asset. So uh, really, it's just a temporary solution. It, and it doesn't matter where the token is right now. Uh, ultimately, it came down to having the ability to protect the token for the end users, for everybody that's involved in our project, the investors, just to, to, to everybody that's, that's taking a part in what Cornucopius is doing. It means something to be able to have it protected in a in a wallet uh, that's got multi-signing uh, functionality. So we, we needed some of that uh, as well as uh, a few other features in, in terms of vesting protocols and things like that that unlock uh, with the smart contract functionality. So 
You know, it's just a temporary solution. Uh, the the idea is that we'll, we'll um, one reason that we minted on ERC twenty and bridged it over to BSC is because it's very easy to go from BSC back to ERC twenty, which is where the ERC twenty twenty converter will eventually be working and enable uh, enable us to easily bridge back to Cardano. So, um, you know, and another thing is our philosophy overall yes while we love cardano we do want to eventually be blockchain agnostic so that we could bring more people into the community and uh so interoperability is a key you know value of cardano itself and so um you know we we will probably be multi-chain with our token at some point uh we've already talked about solutions for getting it on to cnt um, it, in the event that the ERC-20 converter is not quite ready, we've got other solutions as well. There's a company called Chainport, Chainport that's working on that functionality. Chainport.io has Cardano uh, Bridge in, in their roadmap for Q2. So that's one backup we have. And another backup we have uh, that we just talked with ADAX. I'm sure you may uh, be familiar with that exchange. Um, Another backup we have with them is to potentially just burn some of the tokens and mint uh, CNT tokens uh, to list on their exchange as well. So yeah, a variety of ways that we're going to get over to Cardano with the actual token. But again, token's just a temporary solution. Uh, it's, it's the main architecture that we're utilizing with Cardano for NFT minting for you know just so many other things. Yeah, and that makes sense. And it really speaks to uh, your ethos of inoperability. You know, you looked at Binance Smart Chain and realized that the tooling that you needed was there, whereas on Cardano, it was not, you know, so that's just to me. I mean, I see that's how, you know, the direction the cryptocurrency is heading. People are going to use different networks relative to the niche value that they provide. So I see complete where, where you guys are coming from there. Um, you want to take a look at the uh, the bubble, some gameplay? Absolutely. I'm excited. Yeah. Rob, you were up. Let, let's do it. And we go to share my screen. So I'm using um, just a, a PC controller. Looks very much like the Xbox controller. I'll just um, fire it up and it'll connect. Is, is that sharing the screen? Yep. And make sure you I close can, out that preview. Hope it looks good. Frames are good. I can also move the mouse here. I can I can move with with the keyboard as well. But just for me, just being a you know, an, an old school. So this character is one of our um, is actually one of our NPC characters. So he's, he's a non-player character. We're we're currently building out, as you will see um, in current videos, the ability for the player to to produce their own characters so you'll be able to design the skins of them um, whether they're tall whether they're short whether they're muscly so so this is um this is chad this is one of our N npc players this is a bubble this is obviously an advanced bubble this this started off as as two trees in a hammock so imagine the player's been to the mainland it's been doing the daily tasks he's come back he's got all the materials and the uh, this house here um, I don't know how far back I can, I can get here well, without the trees. Um, I don't know if you can hear the dogs barking. Sorry about that. But this yeah. this whole house is not something that you just upgrade in one go. This actually has a whole building system. And, and, and the, the video that we've just released will show how this is built from the, the ground upwards, laying every single element of this. So this is completely <clears> unique to, to however the player wants to look. You can de design how you want. That makes sense because you mentioned you start off with only a hammock, so this is yeah, nice. this the, is a pretty nice hammock right here. <laughs> the yeah. building tools were that I mentioned earlier were utilized to build this house. So the same tools that a new player, big pay you for yourself, that will have for your own personal bubble, you can do this exact same thing. Awesome. Yeah. So, so <clears throat> everything here. So you know. So we've got the bookshelves here. We have this amazing statue everything you look for within your bubble will be for sale so these will all be nfts so the the player would have um i've either played to earn an upgraded or purchased with the in-game currency or grinded away or minted them themselves so everything we look at if we look at here we've, we've got some pictures on the wall we have a nice bed uh we have a some some furniture 
I can I can jump outside here and chill here. And the game is multiplayer, so you'll be be able to invite um, all your friends over, and you can have a party together. We come further down here. Um, we have another non-player character. This this is Abigail. She's she's really having a good time here. Um, and then I don't know if you recognise this 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 image here on the Jet wall. Jet Chicken. Yeah. yeah. So so Jet Chickens, um, obviously a, a a really famous project on the Cardano network. Um, so everybody who owns Jet Chickens, there, there you go. We're a hundred percent compatible. Um, we we all know Kyle. Kyle is is amazing on on the on the Cardano um, network. Um, so he's given me my permission to to do that. There's a television here. You'll be able to see in our video um, the streaming televisions. There's all kinds of things that we can hook into here. Um, a nice Actually, show them that picture on the desk there. Yeah, nice little East, Easter egg there. Um, hmm. I don't actually know how to to zoom in on these controls. I don't I don't know if you recognise that, but that's. That's Charles. Charles. Charles yeah. The old classic bird picture. Yep. Um, over here we have um, a nice little aquarium. So this this will be an NFT, and you'll be able to um, breed your fish within this. Although you can't see in this demo that uh, below actually where we are on on your island there is a, an entire. Um, water section so below all the part, bubbles in the air yeah well okay. in, in that part you'll be able to have sharks and octopuses and all kinds of really interesting nfts hmm. but it's also, a giant aquarium basically yeah it's, it's absolutely so amazing. how does this tie into the you know you stated that once people get their house or their you know their bubble build up to a certain point that they can then choose to save that as an nft you know convert it to an nft how do the little NFTs within the house work? Uh, you know, when you do the one big NFT, does that include all of the little NFTs? Or are you essentially just selling the property in the bubble itself? So what we'll do is we, is we will provide an interface where the um, the owner will say what they want to what, what they want to sell. It'll all be done via a smart contract. They will say, here's the bubble, here's the house, here's all the assets with it. And, and so they will go through, it will literally be a tick box. I mean, there, there might be a select all. And, and then the smart contract, will, the, the player will transfer all their assets that they want to sell to that smart contract. It'll be a one-off sale. It'll pop over to the new owner's wallet. And then as soon as the new player logs in or, or the old player logs in, we will see they no longer have this bubble or the assets within it. And, and the game will just, just take over. So it'd be, awesome. It'd be really, really clever. Now, this we have each bubble needs to go to to the mainland. So the bubbles are all kind of floating in, in, in the metaverse, and this this is how we this is how we do it. So in the in the style of I don't know Thunderbirds, Batman, everybody gets their own little moonwalking garage, and what we have here is. Um, a, a nice little Easter egg from my dev, because because this is a demo mode, <laughs> so 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 it's not quite ready to fly, but yes, in the future this is this is a bubble jet, and this bubble jet will be the the first of our cornucopious NFTs that actually go go for sale. So this will be um, be owned by the by the public. Um, it and actually, I'll need that. Uh, that functionality to fly the bubble jet is already there. The, the program is designed. Uh, our devs have shown us flying out of the vehicle in addition to the sound effects with the vehicle flying out as well. So you'll see some of that in the, the video that's uh, released. Yeah, they, they just know I'm a newbie. And if, if they give me flying controls, I'll, I'll probably crash and make their demo look really <laughs> It's like one of those uh, E3 game testers that you see. You're like, man, they're so bad at this game. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I, I am not the person to demo this. <laughs> um, but yes, we, we go all the way back up here and, and who, who knows where I'm going to end up. So okay. for the flying, you know, you mentioned that, you know, these bubbles in the sky and you're going to be able to fly. So does that mean eventually all of the players will be in the same instance? You know, specifically if they're in their own whole bubble? You know, how are you, 
you know, going to be able to fly, say, to your friend's bubble? Or is it, you know, you fly a certain distance and then you fast travel, say, to their instance once you, you know, reach a certain, you know, distance? Shall I stop sharing that? Is that okay? Yeah, that's cool. And then I'll take us back front and yeah. foremost. So, so yeah, I mean, these, these are really, really interesting questions that you're asking me in terms of performance and, and play-wise. Um, so we're built on the Unreal Engine 4 at the moment, and eventually we will be, we will be building on Unreal Engine 5. I say eventually, we are, we are experimenting with Unreal Engine 5 now, but it's a new operating system. So we'll, we'll wait for that to, to uh, you know, have a few more iterations. When we launch in Q4 of this year, then yes, everything will be ported over to Unreal Engine 5. Now, Un Unreal Engine 5 is also, if you're familiar with the game Fortnite, Epic Games, who built Unreal Engine, they built, built Fortnite. So yeah. this is where we're using their technology. So we'll be able to build our game on PC, mobile, um, games console, and we will have, to begin with, the same restrictions that Fortnite has. And for a player's performance point of view, we will have multiple servers. So if we know who your friends are, you'll be joining the same server and you'll be all enjoying the, the same spaces. And there'll be, there'll be lots more players in there apart, apart from your servers. Uh, currently, at the moment, we can have a couple of 100 players um, on the Unreal Engine comfortably where players are using really low spec PCs. We don't want players to go out and, and have monsters. We want to be as compatible as possible and comfortable. So we Especially use, with mobile, uh, you know, as an intention yeah, as well. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and we'll have a couple of we'll have a couple of techniques that lots of games use. Forza use this technique, Fortnite use this technique where you have a mixture of real players, um, non-players, and, and so the metaverse looks full and you can interact with everyone. But we will try and get as many players in there and as technology moves on from the Unreal Engine, as that gives us the ability to have more and more people, then again, yes, we, we, we will introduce more. I don't know what you've done with your camera, Josh. It's gone a bit funky on my yeah, side. Yeah, you're, uh, you're sideways. Oh, really? So, <clears throat> this isn't really a Cardano question, but it's my own curiosity. That port from Unre uh, the Unreal Engine version you're on now to yeah. 5, is that a simple process or is that a full rebuild? Or do they actually offer, you know, tooling for that? It can, it can be as simple as, you know, go from Windows 10 to Windows 11. Look, all my apps work. And mm -hmm. yes, you can definitely do that. But Unreal Engine 5 gives us so much more performance techniques. Um, we're, we're using nanotechnology, so we can dis we can display more and more um, polygons. So what they've Unreal provide to us is a different way of building your assets. They say this is how you built them in in um, in the old way, but if you now remodel them using these new techniques with Blender and and the other applications when you actually move up to Unreal Engine 5, the performance is going to be amazing. So, so we are building all our assets to be forward Unreal, en Unreal Engine 5 compatible. So it is pushing Unreal Engine 4 a little bit, but we're very aware that we're launching on Unreal Engine 5. So yes, we are taking full advantage from day one of Unreal uh, Engine 5. There's, there's no point in, in developing for 4. Awesome. So do you have any play to earn, you know, inspirations in the crypto space for this game or even, you know, inspirations from traditional video games that don't have anything to do with cryptocurrency? It's going to be a long answer. Do you, do you want to answer that, Josh? Uh, <laughs> well, you know, you can obviously look at what Axie Infinity has done. They've, they've really paved the way in a, in a lot of ways for play to earn there's definitely some other traditional based games that we have looked at for sure uh but axie infinity has been been one of them that is somewhat of an inspiration and really it's just taking the concept of what blockchain enables within a game uh that's to me that is the essence of why building on a block build a game on blockchain is so that we can have these smart contracts to allow the transfer of assets right and and so that's such an empowering f 
feature for gaming and why we see a huge wave of people coming into gaming on blockchain in the first place, which is really exciting. And you see tremendous success with Axie just because of the way that they've paved some of that new functionality of play to earn and what blockchain enables within a video game. However, um, we just want to take that a, a variety of steps further. And so in some of what we're doing, we're taking an idea that, that somebody else has originally started and now we're, we're uh, growing that in our own way. For example, Rob came up with the build to earn feature, which I can he can talk to you a little bit about. And one of the things that I came up with was the learn to earn concept because we want to bring in not just uh, having people playing video games all day long, but we want to bring in an educational element to this. And that's afforded us some very interesting partnerships. For example, one with Tingo Mobile that's going to allow us to get in front of 10 million subscribers that Tingo has in Nigeria, which also plays along with a lot of Cardano's strategy, right? Um, but that partnership with Tingo Mobile is going to be uh, have a learn to earn element as well. Uh, and, and we've uh, listed that partnership on our website. Uh, but that's that's huge. And so and we've it's also allowed us for an, a European business university partnership, which you may have heard of that IOHK is partnered with as well. Uh, but we're working with James Muley over at European Business University to build out a castle where we can create learn to earn functionality or learn to scholarship like uh, just being in this game and going over to the EBU you can apply for a scholarship and they have unlimited scholarships through the university uh, through the uh, country of Luxembourg that's funding these these scholarships it's very interesting and it's not just for people in Luxembourg it's for people all over the world so there's some exciting things that we're doing with learn to earn but basically uh, I'm, I'm giving you a kind of a broad answer to that question because we've expanded on the idea of play to earn. And so I hope I answered what you were really wanting there. But Rob could talk a little bit more about the build to earn functionality as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I would answer that as, as, you know, like yourself, you've been gaming since, since you were a kid. I, I've been gaming since I was a kid, but also programming. So I started programming when I was 12 on the ZX Spectrum. And I've, I've, all these games are massive influence on, on myself. So you Double Dragon, Bubble Bobble, Tetris, the, the whole, you know, 40 years of gaming comes into this. And, and, and it, this game gave me the opportunity to build in mini games. So you're going to see elements of those. Temple Run, you're going to get all kinds of games in there. One big inspiration for me, I suppose, if we, if we look at Pokemon and the collecting games, it was a game called Dinosaur King. I, I was brought up for, for almost 20 years playing games at home, but also in arcades. Um, with, with jammer cabinets and, and, and drive down on physicals, you know, two buttons or three buttons or Street Fighter. And with Dinosaur King, you put your money in and you actually got a card, a collector's card, and it had a barcode on it and you would swipe it and that would level you up. And that was unbelievable for me, That because every time you played it, you got another card, so you were collecting and collecting. You know, fast forward 20 years, they're just collect physical NFTs. You, you you're hooked on playing the game. You you go away and you can uh, you can enjoy what you you've got as as a physical, and you can look at the different attributes and and as you swipe it, as you play the different parts of the game. So that for me, Dinosaur King were was is is probably a really rooted memory going back in there. And then yes, fast forward to to what Josh is talking about, build to earn within the game. We will have this whole interface where players will be able to to go and get the raw materials. They'll be able to have this whole creative side of them where you'll have circles and squares and triangles. You'll be able to morph them into whatever you want. And whatever that final object is, you'll be able to mint that as an NFT. You'll be able to sell that to other players or you'll be able to show it on your island. Thank you. That's very exciting. I like the ideas of uh, build to earn and also uh, learn to earn, you know, incentivizing learning is a, is a pretty cool idea. So I'm curious, uh, you know, with Axie, uh, I've noticed, uh, which was, you know, honestly, I, I just wasn't expecting. It was very surprising to me with Axie, but they've honestly built out a lot of, you know, financial products. And, you know, they're they're not really, you know, called financial products, but it's simply a DEX, right? Because at the blockchain level, there's no nuance between an in-game, you know, cornucopias item and, you know, an NFT that people are trading or even a Cardano native asset. 
So do you guys plan on building out, you know, essentially your own, uh, you know, financial products uh, in the game that allow people to trade these assets back and forth? So say a DEX or, or other, you know, products like that? Yeah, to the extent that our legal team gives us that uh, flexibility. I mean, there's um, there's issues with some angles that we could take that make things a little bit more challenging. For example, uh, bringing DeFi into the game in terms of, you know, we had these ideas of having wells around the, the property where you could go and you could stake in, in a, you know, at a well or, or like just staking ports, little places where you can go and, and work on a DeFi transaction and earn APY, right? Um, we don't know the exact answer, exact answer on what exactly we'll be able to do within the game based upon our, our legal team's advice. But yeah, we definitely have a variety of transactional elements uh, that we're, we're hoping to be able to, you know, give the player uh, freedom and flexibility to do. Yeah, so it, just, it all depends. And, and the, space, the space is evolving. And one of the beauties of being on Cardano is the features that are not here now, but what's coming in the future. So when we when Atala Prism and, and you know, the, 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 the identification is on there, we will know if a player is over 18 or under 18. Um, we don't need to know where they live or anything. We will just know a yes or no. And that will be able to unlock or lock up different parts of the game. So gambling, for for example, if they've gone through what whatever regulation they need within their territory to do gambling, and we know that it's it's completely safe um, um, fr from from a, a legal point of view, then we can give that to those players. We don't have to be. I think what one of the problems we have with blockchain gaming at the moment is everybody wants to be anonymous. Um, but they, the players don't care if they're breaking any laws, whether they might even be unaware that they're, they're breaking laws. So I think it's the responsibility of the game builder to, to help protect them as much as they can, while at the same time um, giving them a really nice gamification way of being able to do day-to-day -day tasks. So I think it is, it's a moving space. It requires regulation, um, legal side of it. But um, yes, we're... we're the Cardano network it provides a lot of those tools in the future. So we're not just building now. We, we plan on being here, you know, way decades in the future. Um, um, so we will we will unlock and put and build the features in as they become available. You know, and that's another reason for Cardano in so many ways. Like their, their foresight for things like digital identity dids, you know, and what they're doing with the Tala Prism is going to create additional uh, compliance functionality that allows us a lot more uh, freedom in terms of what we can do within the game. So we're, we're pretty excited about where that heads as well. And we, and we have partnerships with, with, with Cardano mm -hmm. DeFi. You know, we're partnerships with Wi-Fi. That's awesome to hear. And I, I really like your foresight on uh, Atala Prism, you know, because there are going to be a lot of things, especially as, you know, because there's, it's so strange because, you know, in a traditional centralized video game, you know, people can be earning a passive income through a token and that token can even be used to buy an item that they can sell for real money. But because you guys have, you know, your, your connection to a blockchain, you know, you have more kind of stringent laws and, and more stringent legal, legal requirements as we move forward. Uh, so I really appreciate your honesty there. Um, and, and also your interest in it. And with the Tala Prism, you know, I, I really can't wait for that you know, for people to have the ability to give the information that they, you know, need without giving them all uh, of the information. You know, that's, uh, that's very exciting. And yeah, yeah you know, age, you know, whether they're accredited investor or not, or they're living in a gambling, you know, state or, you know, country, it's, uh, it's all really exciting stuff. So to speak strictly about timelines here, you know, today you guys demo demoed one of the, uh, the bubbles that has been built. So to speak about features and kind of a timeline for those, so I'm gonna list out a few of the features. So specifically, you know, uh, a release, you know, an MVP with uh, the bubble, what, what will be included in, in the MVP? I guess we should start out with that. So, so the, the bubble itself, yeah, we, we, we've had a lot of discussions with this with the dev. So, so we think the, the, 
initial MVP, not the release in, not the release in, in Q4, but before then we may be able to get an early build out um, that we can test. So that will have a bubble where you'll be able to travel to, to one of our zones. The zones will probably not have all the villages in there, but there'll be, there'll be enough in there to go and get the resources. So you'll get used to traveling to a zone, go and getting the resources, maybe play one or two mini games so we can test out that performance and those features and then come back to the bubble where you'll have the, the ability to, to build your, your um, house completely. Awesome. So we're really looking at in the MVP, you know, if the build comes out before the full release in Q4, uh, we're looking at having, you know, a bubble and the ability for the players to travel to one of the, uh, the zones um, yes. and then collect resources and play a few mini games there. That's awesome. So in the, uh, the full release in Q4, you know, what are you got, what are you anticipating to be included in the full release? So, so the full release will be the, the three um, announcer zones that's, that we have and the bubble. So we'll, we'll, we'll have a fully kitted out um, um, zones and each of the zones have 40 villages. Um, in each of the villages have 36 village houses in them. So, so that will be the first release, the Age of the Samurai, um, the Life on the Farm and um, the, the West, the the wild Lovely. west so so those three zones will, will be the the first release and then we will iterate on top of that and, and we will then uh, release when they're ready the different zones because remember there's there's up to 12 different well there is 12 different theme zones each of those zones will have the same they will all come with a stadium of, of some kind where some kind of central um entertainment can happen everybody will have a village now the 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 game is play to earn, but if you if you own land or if you rent property, then that will unlock additional daily play to earn. So so there will be there'll be a maximum that you can earn per day, and and that will be based on um, whether you have ownership or rental within the game. So so it is free to play, but we also need to give value back to to those players that are. Um, you know, you know, putting the time in and building up their properties and, and expanding them to, to a way for them to interact. So the game will work on on many, many levels. But we're also looking at producing a mobile phone game so people can start play to earning a lot sooner th than the game. And, and, and adoption should be a lot quicker on a mobile phone in Q2. So, so we're kind of really getting our skates on and, and getting that version out. So Which that plays in really well with the Tingo partnership because that's going to be access to those 10 million subscribers uh, that will push that through to them uh, to be able to and that economy is such that the modeling for play to earn it, it just works really well uh, where that's a meaningful income for for people uh, and so it's pretty cool to be able to launch that in q2 hopefully yeah for the um the mobile release will that have all of the same functionality as the uh release on you know pc I've, of course the graphics will be a little worse and you know maybe players are limited but you know what is the mobile game going to be separate yeah it could be completely different and, and and it's more of an extension to the game so we because we built the game with with a, with a full uh, diff in different compartments so you have your home bubble uh, you, you have this this whole zones and in the zones you can you can play mini games so the mobile phone is very much going to be in in the in the style of the mini games and this gives us oh, opportunity okay. to move away into into whatever we want so it could be kind of a, a, a traditional frogger um, style game it could be a bubble pop game it could be a puzzle search it gives us complete freedom the way we've designed the game to, to build anything but because it's all linked back to your to your profile that will that will be on on the blockchain you know as all these different games earn together you can go from playing on on a, on a console to a mobile completely different types of game but they all link to your same account so earlier you mentioned that you guys are going to be around for a while, uh, but you know, since we're speaking about the timeline, I wanted to bring it up again. So once you guys do have the full release, you know, you have a lot of plans for future releases and updates and additions to the game. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot. This is, this is going to be huge. So just past that first initial release that Rob was talking about in the end of uh, Q, uh, or Q4 of 2022, we're looking at uh, adding on the city 
and you know there's just so many elements to what we're going to be doing uh, and the city might come a little bit earlier but that's a huge that's an enormous undertaking um, and so uh, the roadmap is really gradual decentralization over time and then eventually to have what would be a self-building game in a variety of ways where the community is building out assets that are being used and so we have custom bubbles where people could go in and do player versus player for example or let's say you're um, you, you, for our metaverse entity one thing that we've allowed for in our tokenomics is to build out a metaverse entity and that metaverse entity will be ideally bringing on it's, it's going to have primarily two functions helping someone to develop their custom bubble that they have and their city property in in the game and develop that in the way that let's say you're tesla and you want to have a showroom uh you want to have a showroom where somebody can walk into a car check out all the features of the model x and maybe you also want to have a training facility for your manufacturing plants where they can walk through a whole vr process or something like that within the plant and employees can be trained the sky's the limit in terms of what we can do so the metaverse entity would be about bringing on companies like that so they'd be a lead gen for bringing companies into the metaverse um, and they would also be a development arm for helping them to develop what they wanted uh, but then in terms of the gamer back to that pe player versus player we're, we're designing features that allow the players themselves to build out a player versus player game within their own personal bubble or not within their personal bubble but if they were to buy a custom bubble that we have they could build out their own game within it Awesome. Very so happy to hear that. And that. That's just um, a short answer for the vision, but the, the, there's there's <laughs> so much that uh, can be done here. And especially as we gradually decentralize, the, the community could start to vote on, hey, we want this new zone. We want to do this. We want to do, you know, and so the game could kind of become self-building over time. Awesome. Well, uh, if, if people want to, you know, uh, join the Cornucopia community or, or learn more, um, how would they do that? You know, where I, I can also put some links down below and, you know, what's what's the next step for someone that's really excited about what you're building? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So cornucopias.io is our website that will have all of our official channels on that. And please be mindful of always using only official channels published on our website or our Twitter uh, but there's Cornucopia's Game to follow us on Twitter. And then very soon, we are going to be offering a program where people could get involved and sign up to be early testers. Uh, and so that's not too far away as well. So just follow us on our official channels, and we'll keep everybody up to date on everything going on. We have awesome. a really, really friendly Discord that, that's growing quite fast, and and that's probably uh, probably the liveliest place to be where, where, where you'll get the information, I suppose, first. and, and uh, yeah, the, the, the moderators in that, they, they, they know quite a lot of the information that's going on. They're always really helpful. It's a positive, fun community, and we're, we're, we want to keep this something where we're growing with the community. Community has feedback. We're having fun. Uh, I'd also mention that we have several NFT sales coming up. We've got a bubble jet NFT sale that's coming up soon. We've got a public land sale that's coming up soon uh, and a variety of other NFT sales for in-game transportation and mounts and all sorts of fun stuff. So uh, that's that's something to look forward to. That's very cool. I'm uh, very excited to, uh, you know, eventually one day get my own bubble, you know, play play to earn. I'm excited. Yeah. Uh, is there anything that you guys want to uh, say that we didn't cover that you think it's very important for the audience to know before we head out of here? Hmm. Uh, the the video, there's th this video is coming out on Monday, is that correct? Okay. Yep, Monday. Definitely want people to check out the video that we're publishing. Today's Friday. That we, we want people to check out the video that we're publishing later today, which is Friday. So when this comes out... Uh, there's another video. Hopefully, we'll give you the link for that so that people could check that out. It's going to be pretty. It's our biggest release yet. It's a gameplay uh, demo video uh, that's going to show off a lot of the new stuff, some of the stuff that I mentioned with the building functionality. So that's that's really exciting, and uh, we definitely want people to be aware of what we're doing there because I think that's one way that we really differentiate ourselves from a lot of the projects out there is we're trying to constantly show what we're building, what our team is doing, because we have an amazing team. And uh, so we're really grateful for them. And we just want to showcase 
everything that's happening along the way and it's really exciting so uh, yeah i would just say that um and then you know come join us it's a fun community we're trying to keep it positive um and and we, we really are it's, it's an exciting and passionate and fun community and uh so just uh come come take part of the journey with us well, I must say I'm uh, really excited for what you're building. You know, me personally, I've always been a, a metaverse skeptic, you know, because I've played so many, you know, video games throughout my life. You know, I hear people uh, essentially imagining and selling universes that are going to have a million players and, and be the next big thing. And, you know, from a technical perspective, you know, I know that that's not possible. But when you guys, you know, are you know talking about the metaverse that you want to build, you know, you're being realistic and you're providing, you know, uh, you're planning to provide a, an experience that, you know, will be valuable and enjoyable. Uh, whereas, you know, I've a lot of what I've seen is just been, you know, uh, here's pictures that you can place. And one day it's going to be, you know, the world. And uh, I really I really want to say I appreciate your guys' uh, you know, honesty and transparency. And, you know, the fact that you're not just, you know, selling something that is impossible. And I would love to have you guys on again, uh, you know, as you guys add more updates. You know, maybe the mobile app comes out or, you know, the... Uh, the final product in uh, Q1, but not the final product, the first release, really. But thank you guys so much. Thank you, man. And we love what you're doing. Keep keep it up. It's great. You're putting great content out. We've been following you for a long time. So it's great yeah. to be on the show. No, I really enjoyed this. Well, thank you. If um, anyone watching, enjoy the podcast, make sure you click that like button. Comment down below. If you made it till the end, please comment Cornucopius down below i'd really appreciate it i love it when you guys make it till the end and so does the algo and uh, if you haven't already subscribe i really appreciate it and uh, with that i hope you guys have a great rest of your week see you man see you later